Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss the uh, farcical situation whereby Boris Johnson is being forced to recall Parliament during the summer recess to discuss the wholly predictable events which have followed the much criticised decision of various governments, most especially the United States government, uh, but including our own from exiting Afghanistan. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I'm not going to discuss the actual situation in Afghanistan or the decisions that have led to this very predictable sequence of events, though I would just point out that for once, I'm not going to be too scathing of Boris Johnson in this specific regard. You know, was it immoral to abandon Afghanistan? Absolutely. Was the response entirely predictable? Of course it was. But let's be honest, this was the decision of the United States government. The main reason I'm not going to discuss the international situation is because it's beyond the scope of this channel, really. I don't have an in-depth understanding of the mess. And the internet is full of enough loud mouths without me throwing more around. What I'm going to focus on is the extraordinary UK politics involved here. Boris Johnson attended an emergency Cobra meeting. Something he never bothered to do during the flooding of last year in this country and, and for a good two months of the pandemic when it hits in this country. You know, um, but he attended it for this. And afterwards, he was ridiculed for saying that the UK had no military options and that he would use diplomatic leverage. I'm not sure what diplomatic leverage he thinks he has. Hence the ridicule. It was also odd that the Cobra meeting was on Friday. It was days after I knew what was going on. And if I knew what was going to happen before then, surely the government did as well. Why did it take as late as Friday? But here's the thing, in terms of the options, so do we have options? There are a lot of people in the UK who may think, well, we're a powerful nation, of course we have options, but are we? The uncomfortable truth is that, although in the, yeah, in the league table of nations around the world, we, we feature relatively highly on the, on the power scale, I suppose, that doesn't mean we have the resources to manage this situation militarily, largely on our own. So when we're trying to think of you know, what could Boris Johnson actually do? What could any British Prime Minister actually do? What we're really thinking of is unilateral action. I can discuss international action, but you, what could we do ourselves if, if others won't? Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not going to say, oh, there's nothing at all we could do. And as a result, that's why I'm not actually attacking Johnson over this one. But I've not heard anyone credible explaining what we could actually do to help Afghanistan without the Americans. I have, on the other hand, heard a lot of credible people saying, actually, there's nothing we can do. So Boris Johnson's actually right. In terms of military options, we actually don't really have any. You know, from a humanitarian point of view, we do. We can accept refugees. The Home Office was alleged to have said, alleged to have said that they would be reluctant to accept refugees from Afghanistan for fear of encouraging other refugees. Yes, I mean, wouldn't it be terrible if we accepted refugees from one part of the world that we've helped destabilise, as it might give the green light for refugees from other parts of the world that we've helped destabilise? Not that Afghanistan is necessarily one of our individual bits of the world being buggered up. Again, not an expert on the intricacies, but the country, I mean, it's buggered up now in the same way as it was 20 years ago uh, when the invasion happened and before that wasn't really us, was it? That's one part of the world where, as far as I know, it's not actually our fault directly. Um, that was the Soviet Union that buggered that up to begin with. And as has often been said, we had a military plan that worked. The military side of it worked. What we lacked was a political plan to deal with the aftermath. And we still don't have that political plan. Hence this very predictable outcome when we removed the, the military solution. But in terms of practical help, we could take refugees. And that's sort of part of what I would like to discuss, because that's that's the one thing we can do unilaterally. Because I wouldn't even be discussing this topic at all, but for the fact that at the time of recording this, Boris Johnson has announced that he's recalling Parliament over this. Now, consider that Parliament wasn't recalled last... Well, let's... I mean, we could, it should have been recalled over some of the last three years. 
2019, the emergency of Brexit. We didn't have a deal. We were heading for a no deal Brexit. Parliament was never recalled to sort Brexit out. You know, Boris Johnson just become prime minister. If that's not a national emergency, I don't know what is. Parliament wasn't recalled. Last summer, despite various COVID and Brexit related domestic emergencies, still wasn't recalled. This summer, despite Brexit and COVID emergencies, including imminent collapse of the supply chain, still not being recalled. But it has been recalled over the latest failure of Western, not just UK, but Western foreign policy in the Middle East. This seems odd. <laughs> and I don't want to downplay the humanity of the situation. We are abandoning a ridiculous number of people to an oppressive woman-hating group of lunatics. But let's be honest, we have made a habit of this sort of behaviour in the past, both ourselves and the United States and Western powers in general. But this time, Parliament has been recalled. Why? It's not the emergency. There are other emergencies far more pressing to the UK for which Parliament has not been recalled. So it must be a political reason. I mean, the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, called for the recall of Parliament, as did other opposition leaders. I don't think that's what's prompted the decision. It will have had more to do with disquiet on the Conservative backbenchers. Certainly, I've seen a few Conservative MPs openly attacking the government over their stance on this, decrying the unfolding calamity and calling for Parliament to debate the matter. Tom uh, Tugendhat, for example, called the decision to withdraw the biggest single disaster of politics foreign policy since Suez. He also seemed to be complaining that our foreign policy is now entirely decided by Washington. Keep up, Tom, mate. It's been that way for a while now, hasn't it? But as the day went on, the lack of communication from the government was bizarre. Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. Dominic Robb. Dominic Robb is the Foreign Secretary. Hasn't said a word at the point at which I'm recording this. Hasn't said a word. Complete. They're both completely unprepared for this. They had a whole week to, to be appraised of the situation. Took till Friday for Boris Johnson to attend emergency meeting. So they have no idea how to explain the situation to the public, nor how to explain what we're going to do. Again, that weakness. I mean, that's what will have prompted the, the comment about we don't have military options, so we're going to have to use diplomatic leverage. That's just a vain attempt to not basically have to stand up in front of the British people and say, do you know what? We haven't got anything. We've got nothing. We've got no power, no influence in this situation. It's a terrible situation where you can do nothing. But that's the truth. You know, but they're going to have to say something this week in Parliament, aren't they? They will also be inevitably asked by someone somewhere what they've actually done so far. What leadership have you actually shown? You know, it's all right coming before Parliament and saying to MPs, right, let's have a talk about it then. What have you done as the leader of this nation? The answer will be a waffled version of boggle. Maybe Johnson and Raab will be hoping that MPs can tell them what they should do. But that's not going to look strong like a strong leader. You know, being clear, there won't be anything we can actually do to help in Afghanistan itself. You know, to speak semi-metaphorically, if we didn't have the strength to defend a fort once the Americans abandoned it, because we would basically support, then we certainly don't have the strength to go back, recapture it, and then continue to defend it. That's just that's just maths. Conservative MPs will hopefully realise the limits of our military capabilities. You know, at the moment, we're struggling to find enough soldiers to drive HGVs and, and ambulances, you know, to cover for shortages of drivers. The idea that we can use diplomacy to help is also ridiculous. We have no influence. Boris Johnson only has limited diplomatic leverage in his own failed state. None at all amongst those now in control in a failed state thousands of miles away. In theory, we could target the Taliban's backers with economic sanctions, I suppose. But in reality, that would also require a concerted international approach. It's nothing we can do alone, even if we had a government prepared to. You know, but when we have a government that has abandoned its own people and raised huge trade barriers with our biggest customers... They're not likely to raise even more trade barriers for the sake of another nation's people, are they? You know, we could call for uh, an attempt to coordinate international action via NATO or the UN Security Council. Keir Starmer suggests that. Again, yes, it would need an agreement amongst other nations. And let's be fair, it would need agreement amongst nations who basically just left them 
and knew what would happen anyway. But it would need other nations to achieve something there. But you could take the stand, you could make the effort, that you could at least stand uh, up and, and say to other nations, what are you going to do? We think we could do this. We're willing to get involved. What are you going to do? Maybe shame some other countries into doing something. But all we actually have the power to do unilaterally is, as I say, accept refugees, grant asylum, grant visas, uh, give hope to some of the people that our Western alliance has abandoned. But we have a government, and especially a Home Secretary, doesn't seem terribly keen on this idea. Priti Patel, whose family fled Idi Amin's regime in the 70s, that's what is, is most baffling about the whole thing. Her family fled oppression. Her family sought asylum in the UK round about the time she was born. And she has made a career out of being against the very people who were exactly in the same situation her family was. But that is what she's turned into somehow. In addition, the government will find its Brexit ideology tested a bit here. After all, consider how this plays out in public. If we accept refugees from one war-torn part of the world, how difficult is it to deny others? Or maybe they will justify it by saying that they're not opposed to refugees or asylum seekers, just the methods that some choose to come here. So what they're actually against is rubber dinghies. Doesn't really matter. The politics of the situation is that if enough Conservative MPs feel strongly enough that we need to help them, and not just look like we need to help them, but genuinely need to help them, then accepting refugees is the only help we have the strength to offer. Opposition MPs will be overwhelmingly in support of this, of course. So I would anticipate that Boris Johnson's team are now taking stock of the political wind. Johnson's leadership is already under pressure, and there's more of that coming next month. He can't afford a needless fight with his backbenchers. So if there's a significant group of them pushing for action, then we could see something being done, at least. It's not in Johnson's interest to, to fight them on this one. If not, if he convinces them that there's nothing we can do, then the parliamentary debate will be a lot of hot air and excuses, and then nothing. But talk of asylum is all we have. You know, you would think the fiercest debate will actually be in the United States. This was essentially their foreign policy move. Um, I cannot pretend I understand what promoted it. I just thought it was madness. But uh, only they have the capacity to do anything significant about it. But politically, can they? It's a huge cock up. Are they going to try and reverse it? It would take a lot more effort to reverse it. A lot more loss of life. And it would just make them look foolish. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.